What's up, Lawrence? How are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm, I'm out here living life. How about you? <laughs> I'm doing the same thing, man. I'm trying out yeah. out there out there living life. Uh, never felt so real, man. It is a it's a it's a different thing, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't know. I'm I'm vaccinated out here. I don't know if you are, but it feels much different to be getting back in the groove. You Agreed. know, Agreed. being around doing the things. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, man. I just a giant sense of relief once. Yeah. Once we started getting like shots. It just felt it was pretty overwhelming. Um, yeah. No, I was dying. I was like, I'm ready to get this going. This yeah. came. Because it's like, people weren't doing what they're supposed to do. And they aren't going to do what they're supposed to do, as we've seen. So it's just like, this is kind of the only option to get back to a certain place. Yeah, man. We so. it's, it's crazy that we are living in this strange place where half of us seem to be listening to science and half of us don't, but there's, we can't do anything other than control. All we can control is ourselves. So it's like, you just got to push through and try and do it, do it right for ourselves and the people we care about. And yeah, I don't know. Oh, man. That, I'm that to was, stay sane. Yeah. That was the thing I was talking to my mom yesterday. I was like, man, as long as my loved ones or everybody's vaccinated, everybody in my life is like taken care of. I was like, I can't, think about what everybody else is doing anymore because they're just doing whatever. So I can't keep up with it. Can't That's keep right. up with it. Yeah. yeah. Man. We can't really control these things. It's like, there's, there's only so much we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, For so. sure. But you know, I mean, uh, we've got, you've got some big stuff going on. There was a big announcement that, uh, <laughs> that, that came through in the last month or so. Um, mm -hmm. Seems yeah. very exciting. Uh, yeah, no, it's and, lit. And you broke your first uh, first track, first new song in a couple of years, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, it's and, been a while. Uh, Lost in Orion, very cool video, and uh, some Appreciate great it. press already already out on it. Um, Appreciate it. Why, uh, maybe we start there. What talk yeah. to me a little bit about um, about this song? I mean, everything I think. That I've that I've heard you do always always feels pretty personal, but and this doesn't doesn't seem any different. I've read <laughs> some interviews talking about how it's kind of um, confessional, even. Um, mm. Why don't you talk about how this song came about a little bit? Yeah, so man, Lost in Orion. So it, it, there's a few stories to how it kind of came about. So I had had like a few records I was working on, and kind of was getting some pressure to like make something a little more upbeat uh, and like a little more vibey, but like I just wasn't really in that place. I think this was like the height of kind of everything. Like I think the protests were happening, um, you know, the COVID things were like off the charts. Um, and I was like very much kind of like in the house and scared and like on edge about like everything, like, I don't know, like I, I said in some other interview, like every time I got on my phone, it was like death, 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 dying, more death. Um, and then at the same time as that was going on, I kind of was just like overwhelmed in my personal life, navigating like relationships and navigating, really trying to show up or figure out how to show up as a queer person and like a person dealing with like gender things um, that I really hadn't, I don't know, like I was really kind of stressed about how that was going to affect all of my relationships, like personal, business, uh, family relationships. And so just trying to find a, a space where I could kind of show up in that. And I was having a hard time with that and also having a hard time with the world. And then like you kind of look online and you see like these attacks on like queer people and trans right. folks and stuff like constantly. And there's enough Some, crazy stuff going on right there, man. I mean, like everybody's yeah. going nuts. So yeah. if, you got, if you're trying to do some figuring out on that level too, man, it's mm -hmm. going to be mind blowing. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, yeah. So for me, I, I think I was just smoking a lot of CBD, uh, trying to keep my anxiety together. Um, and I had eventually got this production together, sampled this, this PLC record, this public library commute record, um, and kind of built the instrumentation around that with C major and um, Desire uh, who like worked on the record and built this this record up and didn't have any verses for it. I just kind of had the hook that came from like the original sample and then like the instrumentation we did. And I was like, 
mentally, like I hadn't even started writing, but I was like mentally kind of struggling with where I wanted to go. Cause I was like, I don't want to make a love song. I'm not in that vibe right now. Like this is not how I feel. And so essentially kind of what I tried to write is like a relationship. Well, not a relationship, but a, a song about my relationship with these things, with the death that's happening in the world, with the way that it, the isolation is showing up for me. Um, and a few other things. And so I just started kind of writing this record that deals with all of that and speaks to all that like super abstractly and super poetically because I think at the time again, like I haven't really like let people know what's going on with me or knowing, let people know what's going on in my life and the things I've been working through. And so it all felt kind of like, again, like confessional or whatever. So it was like, oh, this is maybe th these records are like maybe the first time people are hearing this narrative from me. So what is the pressure of that? And what fears and anxieties are that causing for me? And so like, you know, the literally the second verse is like me talking about like being burned alive because like that was a thing that happened to people. But then also like on the spiritual front of it, um, some of the things that I believe in, in the ways that I show up in the world, like people who, get persecuted for that, you know, get burned at the stake and all kind of other wild stuff. Um, and so a lot of that was me playing with imagery and like metaphors and all kind of other ways of like describing showing up in the world, like the two-spirited item, like all of these things, the sticks for a fire, shimmer on the moon, lost in Orion, like all these, like these, these ways of kind of being as direct as I can for me at that time, but like putting them in a record that, sounds a certain type of way but it's like not that at all all right you know <laughs> yeah because um, there, there is this sort of upbeat feel to the sound mm -hmm. but then when you sit there and listen to the lyrics that you're that you're grappling with quite a bit and then and then there is a whole visual representation of all of that that seems to take everything almost to a different level yeah um, yeah you know so sure. maybe yeah but so talk, talk about that a little bit I'm, I'm interested in i mean you're a filmmaker so mm -hmm. how does it how does it work when you take a song <laughs> and then you go and try and make a visual representation of that and you're working with somebody else because you 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 were co-director on this right so mm -hmm. you kind of think that. that's <laughs> yeah. gonna be difficult right you're a filmmaker so you're how does it work changing roles or or having a partnership on something that you're sort yeah. of used to doing to driving the boat. On yeah, the I think I think with this one I got on a lot of people's nerves to make sure <laughs> that. It did just that because like that video is visions to me. Like those were dreams and visions and stuff that I had had. And we found like references and photography references and different things to kind of like give them a palette to work from. But like for me, this was all stuff that I had. Like when I play the music, I see these things, I see these images. And so I spent some time gathering things, putting things together. Then uh, Nubia, Nubia Yassin, another filmmaker and I like got together and kind of like put it together in terms of like how we wanted it to like be laid out. But no, it was, it was challenging. It was very challenging because I had like such a strict idea and vision of what I wanted this to be. And I was working with new people. I was working with Josh and Sam uh, folks at uh, 143 uh, and uh, studio. And for them, I think they had shown up a different way in music videos before, but then it also just element wise, we were outside, it was cold, cold, cold. Um, the subject matter of the video and the things that I was dealing with was a lot of ritualistic stuff, a lot of sacrificial stuff, a lot of stuff dealing with black bodies in the South and being gazed upon from white folks um in you know uh, entertainment like capacity but what is it for a black person to be pursuing this thing um and try to make a living for themselves and try to be a part of something because there's so many different levels to it there's the the black person navigating this industry thing mm -hmm. and then there's this human being this vessel navigating what it is to be within music as a energy as a 
spiritual thing because I do believe music is a spiritual thing. It's it's it affects so many people so many different ways and it's so powerful. But it, it's an exchange. At least for me, it's been an exchange. You have to sacrifice things um, mentally, emotionally, physically, like your your family, loved ones, like relationships and stuff, to pursue something enough to get to where you're trying to go. And I think for me, when I think about that video, it's 10 years of me working towards a thing, you know, since I was younger to finally get to this place and then to be like brought in essentially. And so like, I tried to find a lot of different ways to represent what that sacrifice looks like, what that loss of innocence looks like. Because I mean, you start music, you're super wide eyed. You're like, oh my God, it's so fun. Whoop de whoop de whoop. And it still is. I wouldn't rather, I wouldn't want to do anything else. But over time, it, it, it makes you jaded. It can wear on you. It's hard. Um, you have to give a lot to get where you're trying to go. And so that video to me represented that. And so I was maybe a dictator on set. Like, but I tried to be nice about it. It just was like, man, I really got to. This has to speak to what it actually speaks to. When we get to work on these other videos, I can be a little more lax because it's just about maybe aesthetics and other little things. But this is so deeply personal. And also my first record with a label, like the first offering since maybe early 2019. You know, like I put out a song like January 2019, but basically I haven't put out music since 2018. So yeah. what is it? I, I, I This has to be right. And me feeling comfortable with it at times will overrule your desire for something. Um, so we had like different little uncomfortable moments. I think especially like with the floating, uh, like slash lynching optic. Yeah. Um, yeah, like they wanted, they didn't want it to be in the video. Like they were like, I, this is too uncomfortable. And I was sitting there on the ladder, like this is what this represents to me as a black person, as a black creative in the South pursuing music. It has to be here. It has to stay. And like kind of fighting for some of this imagery. And so it was it was an interesting process, but it was beautiful. I think everybody came out in the end better and and more um I don't know, like we just came out better in season, but it was hard. It was definitely hard on us. Well, for sure. I mean, I'm glad I'm glad you fought for it the way that you did. I mean, I can't imagine that it's you're you're the only one that's going to have that perspective. I mean, yeah. you know, it, in and being able to make sure that that comes across in the video and in your work is is so important, you know. Mm. I think that you know, I I've, I've had a, a few different conversations like w uh, in similar sort of things over the last week where it's just like that perspective can only come from one place. Mm -hmm. I can't I am not going to have it, right? You mm -hmm. know, it's like that perspective, the only way that that's going to be able to come across is if that artist or that writer has that perspective to be able to give across. So For sure. For um, sure. I, I think that's I I'm uh I'm glad you fought for it, man. It, it, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And we thought like Josh, Josh, me and Josh had like an hour long conversation about like it being there or not. And he was like so worried as he should be as a white man, <laughs> but nothing happened. I was like, I was like, we got nothing but like hyper praise for the video. And I was like, see, I was like, just trust me. Like, I know what I'm talking about. Just trust me. So yeah, it was funny. It was funny. Um, well, yeah. Well, how about, Let's talk about that a little bit too. Oh, yeah. Well, before we get into uh, before we get into the label stuff, talk. How about the like? How did you get into the Orpheum? How did you get into some of these uh, like, locations? <laughs> like that you, you were shooting this stuff in. What's, uh, what's up with that? That was a favor from from Josh's side. Josh had some connections to some folks that had some connections to the Orpheum, and so they let us in. I don't think they knew what the hell we was doing in there. <laughs> And I'm glad like they kept coming in there and like we're looking around a little bit and then they would leave. But like we we didn't do anything crazy there. We had some ideas there, but we didn't do too much. But yeah, no, the Orpheum set it off like it, and then it became so like symbolic to me. This is not something uh, that was intentional, but it means a whole lot to me now when I go back and watch the video. I don't know how much the Orpheum would like be OK with people knowing this stuff, but yeah, they had a black only entrance, just like everything else had a black only entrance, you know, years ago. And like, I, I think there was some like recent history with that spot or something recently. But like, what is it to be one, a black creator telling this story in the space where 
black folks maybe wasn't able to be on stage or be in the crowd or was separated from everybody, right? That's the little small novelty part of it. Like who cares? But I think to show those almost ghost-like in a trance individuals kind of lurching and dancing yeah, yeah, across the stage, mm-hmm. yet with nobody there, just like I think about, a lot of times I think about like the spirits of black musicians and creators who, you know, maybe never got they just do or like got plucked by the record label or, you know, ended up in these kind of situations where they lost their rights, lost their masters, all these types of things. And how like their performing spirits are like forever in an unrest, you know what I'm saying? In spaces like that, in spaces like, you know, any of these kind of old historical spots and venues or studios and things like that, I think about that. And so, you know, obviously not wanting to end up like that myself, um, representing that was very important for me, along with the two-spirited item, like these kind of dueling spirits, you know, navigating these spaces still to this day. Because, like, the video doesn't really have a time to it. Like, none of the videos that we're working on have, like, a time. Like, they could be any time. And that's a thing that I, like, really like about that or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, I mean, think, right. You're the talk, thinking about the music industry and how much has... Uh, it has been uh, taken advantage of black artists, female artists, but specifically black artists. Yeah. Um, it is, it's an interesting way to sort of represent that um, visually. Uh, and that rolls us right into the new thing. You've got a label now. So yeah. like, how's, yeah. uh, what's going, what's, how did this all happen? <laughs> and, uh, and tell me about it. How's the experience been so far? It's been dope. Um, man, I keep telling people like, you know, I always had certain goals with doing this, even if I didn't like outwardly promote them. Right. So I've been having a conversation with a few people lately about like knowing that you have certain goals and certain ambitions, but you're around people who maybe can't fathom the fact that you have certain goals and certain ambitions. So you downplay yourself or like make yourself seem more modest and kind of like hold your, your goals back. Like you don't really tell people. And so for me, I 50% was working towards like retirement from music. Right. But literally at the same time was recording new music uh, with other people and doing everything I could behind the scenes to make sure that I maybe got the opportunity to keep continue to pursue it. Cause I I honestly had felt like I kind of hit my glass ceiling here in the city. Right. Um, I performed damn near everywhere. Uh, I've shown art damn near everywhere. Um, I've made money doing the things. Uh, I won awards. I I did a bunch of cool stuff right. here in the city and I did not want to move. That was a big thing for me. I did not want to move. And the goals that I had outside of the things I had already accomplished, I felt like I would need like insane investment or label investment, right? Which is basically the same thing. And so uh, 2019, I got completed this uh, public art project and got like a decent check. Like I got a a decent check. And so I was like, hey, I can either keep this money and let it carry me into 2020 because I was broke, like broke, 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 broke in 2019, uh, which people do not know. But I was very broke. And I was like, I can either hold on to this money. It'll carry me into 2019, hopefully to the next check. And I can live and take care of myself and, and groceries and all this other stuff. Or I can put all this money into going on tour. And part of me, you know, again, like the safe part of me was like, ah, just keep the money. The who I am part of me was like, put this money into this thing. This is like, you've never had this opportunity. You have fans in new places now because of streaming and playlisting and stuff like that. Like I'm getting streams from all over cities that I'd never have been able to physically reach, you know, with my music. So this is an opportunity to like go on the road. So took some money from that pile, put it into the tour, got some support from some other places. Uh, Eggleston Works, um, you know, helped support which Jim over there is my manager. Uh, You know, I got some support. We put the thing together. We like barely scraped it through. We went on tour and halfway through the tour, I came back to Memphis for a Memphis stop, which was at a green room. So I do a stop at the green room. I do a show. Um, 
Matt Ross Spang was there uh, at the show by the request of Jim and some other good friends we have. Uh, he came through. He saw the show. I guess he was very impressed and blown away. He made a bunch of phone calls. Um, and then I got a bunch of phone calls and emails and stuff like that. Uh, but it's so interesting because I was like literally driving to pick someone up and I was thinking in the car, oh, sh you know, oh, dang. The tour is almost over. I have maybe two more dates. Nothing has happened. I probably would just come out breaking even like I'll just come out without being in debt or being in debt, which I did come out in debt. But I took care of it. I'm not in debt anymore. But. I borrowed money from different music places. Industry. It's the music, music industry. industry music industry. So, <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. You're not for surprising folks, me with any of this. For, so, yeah, for folks that don't know, I went in debt to make sure I went on tour. I had borrowed money from people and stuff like that and wasn't sure if I'd be able to pay them back, which I knew I would, but that's how much I believed in. I was like, I'm going to be able to pay them back. Yeah. And it'll take some time, but I'll pay them back. But I was thinking, like, oh, nothing has happened. If something doesn't happen in the next two dates, you know, this is just, this is it. This is the end of what Don Lifted is right. or whatever. And I was like fine with that. And I come to terms with it and everything. And so like, I get like a phone call from Jim, Fat Possum follows me on Instagram. Like it's all happening as I'm driving, like on the phone, like I'm trying to answer Jim's call. Then like Fat Possum followed you, Fat Possum DM'd you. Then two emails popped up from like different people at Fat Possum. And I'm like, yo, yo, yo. And like I get on the phone and like Jim is like, yeah, they want to have a meeting with you. Da, 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 da. Matt told them about you. They're like really impressed. Whoop -de -whoop. And like I got off the phone. I just like started boo hoo crying. <laughs> That's amazing. Because <man. laughs> it took amazing. me, you know. And so we had the meeting. It went great. Uh, and it's so crazy. Time went, you know, time was timing. And I ended up signing a week before the world shut down. I drove down to Oxford, signed, came back to Memphis. Next week, everything shut down. Yeah. And so then I had to wait. It's crazy. It's yeah, crazy. I had to wait. And it was a blessing because I ended up recording my whole album during COVID, like right. during 2020. Um, and so, yeah, that's how that kind of went. And it's, it's super lit. Everybody over there is showing a lot of love, uh, right. really accommodating, uh, really communicative. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I and the crazy thing is I wanted to sign with them years ago. Like I was trying to get in touch with them years ago, but I didn't have no proof of concept, basically. Like I just had ideas. So, you know, it ended up working out. So, yeah, it was dope. I'm glad for you, man. That's great. I appreciate great. it. I appreciate I think it. That's gonna be, I think that's going to be awesome. No. Nah, um, and, yeah, well, I mean, okay. So th then tell me a little bit about, I, I know you can't tell me a ton about it, but what's coming, what's coming next? Like you've got, um, it's, it's, <laughs> I got what's the I got trajectory things. like? What's this, what, like short term, long term, what, what is, uh, what's next for Don Lifted? So what I can say, things are always coming. Things will always be coming. Uh, that's something I want to make like very clear with people that, I, I'm here now. Like, I'm here. Like, there's no retirement. There's no quitting no time soon. There's no drop-offs. Like, I'm here. I have the infrastructure. I've always just been asking for the infrastructure. Like, I think the the pool of wherever I get what I get from is in, infinite, right? It just was financial and other things kind of slowing me down. But now, you know, I got I got a team. We got a label. We're doing the things. They supportive. Um, it's a good environment. And so it's just going to be. As as the world opens up, it's just going to be more and more and more. Um, and I'm speaking into existence. It's going to be bigger and better every single time. Whatever record that is, whatever piece of art that is, whatever opportunity that is, whatever press that is, it's just going to be bigger and better every time. Because, like, you know, again, I. I try not to speak on certain ambitions that I have with this stuff, but like I stay here for a reason, right? Like I have, I have friends in LA, I have friends in New York and all these different places or whatever, but I'm staying here in Memphis because when you look at this city in terms of what like music is known for, right? Even in the hip hop sector, right? Let's just keep it hip hop. Mm -hmm. It's mostly street music. It's only really street music and street narratives and certain stuff and that's totally fine those stories need to be told but there are a lot of stories in the city that aren't being told and you know i'm essentially one of the only people here i think i'm the only person here telling certain stories with the deal 
um, who's living in the city. And so for me, the work that I'm doing here, whether it be with the collective, the organization that I'm a part of, my own personal art career, my filmmaking career, my music career, it's all to uplift other narratives and those narratives too, but narratives uh, within the city um, that aren't being able to, because more doors that open for me, the more doors open for everybody else, whether they like me or not. Um, but that's the goal for me. Like the goal is to like, I want to be the staple at Fat Possum. Like I have no qualm saying that. I want to be one of their premier artists or whatever. Like whatever I go, I want to show up in the best way possible um, and really push these things forward because um, there's a bigger mission for me. And I want to make sure that like everywhere I show up, everything that I do, I'm maximizing the experience, maximizing the, the opportunity for myself and for the people who support me, invest in me, believe in me. Like I want every, I don't never want to drop the ball. And I'm not like feeling an insane amount of pressure. This is what I want to do. Like this is literally what I want to do more than anything else. So it's nothing for me. Like I'm ready to kick ass. Like I'm ready to put in work. Um, and the universe gave me this opportunity compiled with the work that I was putting in for years. So I'm finna show off. Like that's what I'm trying to show off in everything and everything. That's the goal for me. So that's what's coming. Me showing, me showing off. That's what's coming. <laughs> that sounds great, man. I, yeah. I think uh, I think we are lucky to have you uh, as a as a Memphian, and um, I appreciate I'm glad you're in here doing it, and I'm glad you got that infrastructure around you to feel a little bit more comfortable doing it. And, man, uh, I can't wait to see what's next, man. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you, man. Always supporting, always showing love, reaching out to me. You know, what I'm saying supporting early, early on, like with the Ghana stuff, like the Alero things, like that. Th none of this stuff that that is happening now would be possible if it wasn't for folks like you saying yes to a thing that sounded nuts years ago. Yeah. Right. And so you allowing me space, everybody allowing me space to just show up and try a thing and push this stuff forward is why I'm here the way that I'm here now. Like if you say no to that, I don't know what happens. I don't know if that album gets the lore around it that it got, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you, man. Like I really do. Um, yeah. All of this, it means a lot. It means a lot. Uh, no, no problem. Uh, it's yeah. Uh, yeah. I knew it was going to happen. I mean, <laughs> I told you. I mean, I mean, not that I knew and knew, but like nobody else has come in there and dropped off a box of CDs and sold them all in a week. So it's like <laughs> this guy's going. He's doing something right. He's doing I something right. It. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. No. I, all right, Lawrence. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the time. Um, and uh, great seeing you. And can't Same. wait to uh, see what happens next. Same, man. Take care, man. Thank you so much.